Hi, my loves. Welcome, welcome back to the Stars Cartel channel. If you don't know, I'm your girl, Star, okay? And God put it up on my heart to talk about those moments, okay, when you want to go off, but God says no, okay? <laughs> and I have had this problem so many times, y'all. And, you know, this was recently put up on my heart because of, you know, a situation in my life, okay? And I'm not going to lie, you know, I, I'm quiet and I'm timid and I'm shy, but if somebody come for me, I, 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 I can read, okay? I can read and I don't throw shade. I send straight shots, okay? I can read and you know, I know I'm the kind of person when I meet someone, when I'm around someone, I'm very attentive, not only because of, you know, my past of being in the streets, I can't help but to be attentive. I can't help but to notice the little bitty things that normal people would not even pay attention to. So when somebody tries to come for me and try to act like they, you know, coming after me, I always got to come back. And, I, you know, my comeback gonna hurt feelings because it's the truth and the truth hurts. And y'all, I'm not saying this as in I'm a mean girl and I'm always sitting up trying to judge somebody or be mean to somebody. I just notice little things. I'm not the type of person to try to pick and uh, be mean to anybody. I'm not going to be throwing slugs. I'm not that kind of person. I just notice things, you know, and I ignore it because I do realize that nobody is perfect and everybody has some kind of flaw. And, you know, I always try to find the beauty in people. But I also notice the bad things, too. Okay, but anyways, this happened to me a little while ago, and, you know, God was like, hush, okay? And God gave me three scriptures to go with this. The first scripture comes from Psalm 33. My little bookmark says, love is patient, love is kind. And the other side says, through our feelings come, though our feelings come and go, God's love for us does not. Surely God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet had almost slipped. I had nearly lost my foothold, for I envied the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. They have no struggles. Their bodies are healthy and strong. They are free from coming burdens. They are not plagued by human ills. Therefore, pride is in their necklace. They clothe themselves with vengeance, with violence. From their callous hearts comes iniquity. Their evil imaginations have no limits. They scuff and speak with malice. With arrogance, they threaten oppression. Their mouths lay claim to heaven, and their tongues take possession of the earth. Therefore, their people turn to them and drink up waters in abundance. They say, how would God know? Does the Most High know anything? This is what the wicked are like, always free of care. They go on amusing... Uh, amassing wealth surely in vain i have kept my heart pure and have washed my hands in innocence all day long i have been afflicted and every morning brings new punishments if i had spoken out loud like that i would have betrayed your children when i tried to understand all this it troubled me dearly it troubled me deeply till i entered the sanctuary of god then i understood their final destiny surely you placed them on slippery ground you cast them down to ruin. How suddenly are they destroyed, completely swept away by terrors. They are like a dream when one awakes. When you arise, Lord, you will despise them as fantasies. When my heart was grieved and my spirit embittered, I was senseless and arrogant and ignorant. I'm sorry, y'all. I was a brute beast before you, yet I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand. You guide me with your counsel. And afterward, you will take me into glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And earth has nothing I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Those who are far from you will perish. You will destroy all who are unfaithful to you. But as for me, it is good to be near God. I have made the sovereign Lord my refuge. I will tell of all your deeds. So y'all. In this scripture, you know, it says a psalm of Asaph, okay? In this scripture, what he's talking about is how he's had to deal with people being arrogant, being boastful, and being nasty. 
And you know, a lot of times when people come for us, they come for us as if they perfect and as if they don't have no wrongs and as if can't nobody come for them. They come for us in such a way like they don't look in the mirror. And you know, a lot of times I feel like when bullies and people that are trying to be nasty, people that's trying to make fun of you, people that's trying to bring you down, the only reason they even taking out the time, effort, and energy to do such is because something is wrong with them and they don't want to admit it. And, you know, in this scripture, it says, yeah, they may seem like they got it going on here. Yeah, they may seem like they have everything they could possibly want. They may seem like they're happy. They may seem like they're striving. But in reality, they are going to end up in hell because they are arrogant. They are boastful and they are hateful to the children of God. And, you know, as children of God, God would prefer for us to not um, behave in such a way. God would prefer for us to show that we love him by being graceful, by being loving, by being caring, by being sweet, by being kind. You know, sometimes not saying anything says a lot more. OK, and that's real because I sometimes people will say things to you and you think in your head, that's not even true. Like, and you know it's not true. And you know, and that person know it's not true, but they trying to push your buttons. And sometimes people be trying to push your buttons in order to um, assassinate your character. They're trying to push your, board, your buttons because what they really want to do, they want to make you out to be this monster. They want to make you out to be the bad guy. And um, this has happened to me before where someone was just pushing my buttons, just talking down on me, talking down on me, talking down on me. And eventually I burst and I went off on him and everybody else. And all he did was use it against me, use it to make all those people dislike me, use it to make me look like the bad person, use it to make me look like this awful monster. When in reality, everybody ignored the fact that this person kept on picking at me. Everybody ignored the fact that this person kept on cussing at me, trying to pull me down, trying to make me out to be this awful person. And I feel like that is why God is calling me to say this. Whomever this person is that's trying to mess with you, block them, delete them, and move on. Because they're not doing nothing but trying to assassinate your character. That is what their true intentions are. Okay, y'all. So, uh, the second scripture that God sent me to is Leviticus 23.23. Okay? I will always keep you in my heart. I will always love you. The Lord said to Moses, say to the Israelites, on the first day of the seventh month, you are to have a day of Sabbath rest, a sacred assembly commemorated with the trumpet blast. Do not uh, do no regular work, but present a food offering to the Lord. I feel like with this scripture, what God is saying, um, in reality, I actually started looking over it. And in this chapter, um, in, of Leviticus, we are going over the different days that God wants us to uphold, which some of the uh, some of them we do still hold in our traditions today. Some of them we forgot about. OK, and um, I'm not even just getting on anybody because me too. my last job, they had me working every Sunday. OK, and it became a problem. But let's be real. Um, I feel like what God is saying in a sense, upholding his Sabbath, in a sense, upholding God's glory, in a sense, us, you know, respecting God is to allow evil to do what evil is going to do. And we should walk the uh, line of a holy one. We should walk the line of someone that is of God, someone that a child of God, a child that God loves. We don't need to be acting like that. Let them act a fool. If they want to act a fool, let them act a fool. If they want to cuss, let them cuss. If they want to stump and fall out, whatever. Um, like I said before, you know, your girl used to be uh, Billy, you know what, okay? <laughs> I have no problem heading it out, uh, snatching nobody up in the past. But today, I'm not going for that. I'm not deliberately trying to fight anybody. I avoid fights as much as I can. However, if you put your hands on me, it's a different thing. And I feel like that is what God is saying. You don't deliberately, like if somebody is just saying something, that let them talk. If all they can do, that's they talking and that's all they doing, whatever. They can talk as much as they want to. They can say whatever they want to, but I bet they won't touch you, okay? And that's the thing. Um, sometimes when people be gossiping, we get all anxious and we get all nervous 
But in reality, whoever they are telling this to, these lies and this drama and this foolery to, if they believe it, they didn't care about you in the first place. If they didn't take out the time, effort, and energy to call you up and ask you what's really going on, they don't care anyways. They don't like you anyways. They didn't love you anyways. And that's real, okay? God loves us, and God doesn't want us walking around acting a fool and acting a hot mess, okay? God wants us to behave a certain kind of way. And, you know, that's, like I said, what this chapter is about, the way God wants us to behave, how God wants us to uphold ourselves, how God wants us to be in this world. You know, God doesn't want us to just be acting a clown, acting a fool. I went over this um, on my video about fasting. You can't be fasting and asking God for something while in the back of your mind you're thinking about how you want to go and fight somebody. You can't be fasting and acting like you you trying to get something from God and you doing your best. But uh, in the back of, of your mind, you're thinking about committing adultery or fornication or whatever it is that you're doing. You can't do both. You got to choose. Starving yourself is not fasting, okay? <laughs> in the eyes of the Lord. It's fasting, but not in the eyes of the Lord. The third scripture God sent me to is Joel 2, 18 through 27. My bookmark says, whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. If God brings you to it, he will bring you through it. Oh, amen. Okay. I feel like that's a message in itself. If God has brought, has destined you to go through whatever you're going through with whomever is testing you, know that God is got it. Okay. I have seen with my own eyes how people were trying to come for me, trying their hardest to get me to start throwing their hands, trying their hardest to bring that anger up out of me, trying their hardest to pull that old star out. And I remained calm. And almost instantly, God got them. Okay? Got them. Okay? Got them. Got them. Regardless if they tripped, tumbled, whatever happened, God got them immediately, instantly. Okay? Uh, so let's go over the scripture. Then the Lord was jealous for his land and took pity on his people. The Lord replied to them, I'm sending you grain, new wine, and olive oil, enough to satisfy you fully. Never again will I make you an object of scorn to the nations. I will drive the northern horde far from you, pushing it into the parched and barren land. Its eastern ranks will drown in the Dead Sea, and its western ranks in the Mediterranean Sea. And its stench will go up. Its smells like will rise. Surely he has done great things. Do not be afraid, land of Judah. Be glad and rejoice. Surely the Lord has done great things. Do not be afraid, you wild animals, for the pastures in the wilderness are becoming green. The trees are bearing their fruit, and fig tree and the vine yield their riches. Be glad, people of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the autumn rains because he is faithful. He sends you abundant showers, both autumn and spring rains as before. The threshing floors will be filled with grain. The vats will overflow with new wine and oil. I will repay you for the years the locusts have eaten, the great locusts and the young locusts, the other locusts and the locust swarm, my great army that I sent among you. You will have plenty to eat until you are full, and you will praise the name of the Lord your God. God told me to underline that. Who has worked wonders for you. Never again will my people be ashamed. I was told to underline that as well. Then you will know that I am in Israel, that I am the Lord your God, I underline that, and that there is no other. Never again will my people be ashamed. Once again, I was told to underline that. So God is saying, sometimes people make you feel like if you don't say nothing back, you will punk. Sometimes people try to, you know, <laughs> ghetto people, hood people, no offense because your girls ghetto too. But I'm just being real. You know, ratchet people, um, riffraff, they think if they going off on a mouth at you and you ignore them, you're scary or you a punk. But in reality, it's not always that you're scary and it's not always you're a punk. It's easy to go and, you know, start throwing hands. But it is hard when somebody is being nasty, when somebody's steady picking at you, when you know they talking about you, when you know they talking about you, when you know it, you know it, you know it, you know they talking about you. You know, you know you can feel it. I'm just being real. 
My baby looking at me like I'm crazy. But I'm just being real. You know they talk about you and you be like, man, you know, you know, you just be getting hot. You be getting irritated. You be getting angry. It is easy to say, you know what? Forget this. I'm going to go ahead and, and get them what they want. Okay. They want a show. Let's get it going. Okay. Let's get it cracking. I'm up. I'm up. What's good? Okay. What's really good? Okay. But it is hard to hold your composure, to remain calm, to remain cool, to not get in that, you know, not to allow your emotions to take over you. It is hard not to fight. And it's hard for me. It's hard. It's hard, okay? Your girl will pop off like I used to. I will pop off like it was nothing. It will be little bitty things that will make me pop off. And I'm just being honest. You know, once again, like I said, I'm not perfect. It's been times when somebody then uh, stepped on my shoe. I used to wear these shoes in a club that had no heels. I, I, back then, the shoe with no heel, where like it was just like that. And I remember I was walking in the club one time. This girl tried to tip me over. I turned around and got ready to swing. I was ready to fight over something so small. My friend had to pull me away and take me outside. And I'm just saying this to say, you bring more shame to yourself when you react, you react to people's ridiculous actions. You bring more shame to yourself and you bring more embarrassment to yourself. And a lot of times you don't even know how that can happen, especially like, you know, where I'm from, Houston, you go down in H-Town. You don't know what nobody is feeling. You don't know what nobody got on them. You don't know if somebody going to go outside and pump the trunk. Houston people known for going outside to pump, pump the trunk at the end of the club when somebody done pissed them off. You don't know what they carrying. You don't know what they got going on. You don't even know. And this is something that I had to learn. Like, y'all y'all don't even understand. That's why I said I praise God that I made it to uh, C31 because it go down, okay? It's a lot that happens in this city that I somehow, some way skated through. I don't know how. As somebody that, that was in the, you know, hanging out with the thugs, I somehow, some way slid away from all of that evil that go on. And, you know, I just feel like God is saying you'll bring less shame to yourself, less embarrassment to yourself if you keep your mouth shut. It may seem, you know, when you're in your 20s and when you're young, it seemed like you would end up cooler if you go ahead and pop off on that person. It seemed like people, you know, people praise you. They say you legit. They say, oh, don't, you don't want to mess with that, 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 because they got this, they got that. But in reality, as I grew older, I feel more ashamed of some of my actions than I do proud. And, you know, it is what it is. But sometimes we start popping off by the mouth and we don't understand that it made people angry. Like I said, I'm the type of person I pay close attention. I look at the details, okay? You think you you reading me, but you ain't ready for the read that I will give to you. And I'm just being real. I'm just being honest. But I had to learn that my mouth, okay, my gift of gab, my, my, my shade, them straight shots, hurt people feelings and when you hurt somebody feelings that are already angry towards you they already feel some kind of way they already feel animosity towards you some people are evil pure evil some people are running on demon time for real for real running on straight demon time and you say the wrong thing to them and you might end up on the newspaper and that's just being real so this is the message that god gave me today y'all and once again, this is something that me and God was talking about, okay? Because somebody came for me. And I was like, Lord, you know, you know, you know, okay? They think they coming for me, but you know, Lord. You know, Lord. I'm sorry, y'all. I, I know sometimes I just be too real, but I'm serious. Like, I was like, Lord, you know, I will read her like it ain't nothing, nothing. I'm going to stop. Okay. Because that's exactly what God told me not to do. That's why we're going over this. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And that is the message, y'all. Thank you guys for joining me. I will for sure, for sure be seeing y'all tomorrow. Sorry it was only one video today, but you know, I was just kind of having my rest on this Sabbath day. Okay. I was um taking out the time to watch other ministers, other pastors, and I love you guys, and I'll see you on the next video. Okay. Deuces.